put this one in the calculator. So let's review how that is done. Okay. So you're gonna probably write the word. You're gonna probably write the answer mostly. Okay. Actually, let well, let's. So everybody, grab your calculators. You can do a doc B to get rid of what's there. We've been using them a lot today. So like almost every class has used the calculator today. All right. So we are putting in these two functions. We've got x cubed. Everybody's going to do this because you've got to be able to do this for the test. Minus 2x uh, plus 1. And then hit enter. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then we've got the negative. All right, everybody have the how to use the disk method to find enter. the volume of a solid written down? Okay. So I need to do my little demo on the board okay, again. So they okay. wanted us to integrate this so between wherever the intersection is and 1. So I need to figure out that intersection point first because I don't just try to trace or estimate because I won't get the right answers accurate to three decimal places. So how do I get that okay, intersection so I point? Okay, can I see that? Good. Good, and then drag the thing, right? So the so, yeah, it looks like we're integrating from negative square, 1 to 1. Okay, so let's write this down. Let's write the setup down. Okay? So we just said that we're going to go from negative 1 to 1. Which function was on the top? The cubed or the 2? The cubed. So we're going to do x cubed minus 2x plus 1 minus negative 2x dx. Now, it says to use a calculator. Do I need to do that by hand? Um, and then same thing here. No, we're going to use the calculator to do the whole thing. Okay. And if I remember right, there's a couple of ways we could do that. Okay. Let's see. Menu, analyze graph. Let's try menu, analyze graph, integral. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to see it where there's a whole lot of. Menu, analyze graph, integral. Um, and it wants me to, oh wait, I don't think I can do bounded, huh? Never mind. Let's try an the bounded. Menu, analyze graph, bounded area. Lower bound, and don't just try to trace over the lower bound. You type it in, right? Negative one, enter. And then upper bound, type it in, one. Enter. Okay, so this so this method is area. called the disk method. Tomorrow we're going to see a method called the washer method. Oh wait, it's in there. Isn't um, it? and what then uh, there's another so method called shells. It. I don't so teach it because all two, the though, ones in the in AP there. test you can do with disks. Right, another and way we could do this. Okay. So, so you like I know Mr. Lepis might teach it to his kids. Okay, so the other way is going back to this screen. Practice this with me. I don't want to. I don't want to get too much in our brains that we have to focus on. Go in the button next to the book. Need a kid to come out. Hello. Okay. Oh, menu. I need somebody to run that's out another way to do it. The, the button next to the book and it gives you the integral no, symbol, the cart. right? And you go from we said negative one to one, maybe to one, and then you do var. The top function have this time happened to be an F1, but make okay. sure you know before you do that. Thank you for going and doing Minus that. the bottom okay. function var F2. And then throw an X at the end of the D and hit enter. Okay. Okay. Let's, okay. okay. One more thing. Then so there's another basics way to write it. down. So these are what we call solids of revolution. Group as much last in, year. So this the other things other than the wedding bell that you so can envision, think about the parts of cars, right? Menu. Um, that go inside of cars. We have to have a way to build those, and we do that with a rotation, what we call a rotation. Right? A funnel, right? And a disc, it pops up that a bottle, okay? okay? All kinds of different things so we could get. I'm not, I don't know why I have that in there. I haven't looked at that in a while. Okay, you got a bunch of stuff I'm to write sorry. down right there. So write that down. Is Cody being too loud? <laughs> you got zero? Did you do f of one minus f of two? Let me see what you typed in. It's because you went from one to one. Oh. You should get zero. <laughs> you missed a negative. Nice. All right. Everybody okay and comfortable with the calculator? So what are we going to write down for the answer to that one? Two. Two. So this would be a good one on a test where I wouldn't even give you a piece of paper almost. You would just type it in online, two. Okay? All right. The next one, the picture's missing. 
you get to sketch the picture. Okay. So the next one's animated. It's got the, all the number. I don't know why the numbers are there twice. So it crossed them out. It's got so it's got a curve and a line. Okay. So sketch that picture somewhere. All right, we good? We got the picture sketched? Okay, so there's uh, the issue with this one here is that um, we have, uh, technically, if we tried to integrate between the curves, the only area that's between the curves is from here on, right? So it's not always good to integrate going that way. I'd have to do two separate integrals. I can do that, and that's fine, okay? It's going to pop some stuff up here. So if we do vertical strips, we have to integrate it in two parts, okay? And it would look like that. Don't write that okay. down. Okay. So a solid of revolution is when a region we in could the plane also is integrate in a horizontal line. So this strip. This time we're going to revolve. So how did they? So okay. we could do the same thing, and then um, we take the this axis equation of revolution and subtract the line that, that revolves. Okay, but the it has to be solved so somewhere. There's going to be an axis of revolution. To Today okay. it's probably going to be your so x. So let's start by solving for x. Okay. So if um, a they disk gave is the simplest the solid formed by revolving a rectangle there's the first about function, an axis one adjacent down. to one side of a rectangle. Okay. And y the volume of the disk is the, is the area of, of the disk of there, times the width of the disk. So do you see and how the, the disk second is function, a circle oh, shape? You so you get rid of the square the root we and then square the width So this one here actually is x equals y squared. That's what we would use for that function. Um, another thing that you right, have to know about a disk, is y you might want to write this out in the left-hand column, two, what do I have to do to is that the two to the um, other side? your Add function, it. so it's y plus 2 equals x, or x equals y is plus next 2. two. So now we're going to use those the two axis functions to integrate. revolution. Okay. So which one is you most have to be able to, to the today right it's or further because they're all the discs, but tomorrow when I add in y the y plus the two washers, minus the y squared, it's, hard, is it's what harder we would to tell do. you. Gotta be able to Let's understand see, it comes how to tell the, the next difference. screen here. Okay. So if your function is added right. next oh. to you or touching the And what are we integrating to and from? They didn't really tell us that, but if you look at the picture here, it was marked, wasn't it? So these are some pictures that we're integrating with respect to y. Just like the function we have on the board, the axis is zero to one. We've got all these little little rectangles in there. When we revolve them, now they become circles, so that's why we call them disks. Okay, because they look like circles. See if you can finish it. From Imagine there. stacking like a quarter, no, by a hand. nickel, a dime, a penny, or a penny, a dime, right on top it. of each other, kind of sticking. To, we're gonna we're gonna add up all those discs. Okay, so this is kind of the evolution of the formula. Um, we take the area of the circle and we multiply it by the width. So in our case, what we're gonna do is the pi is just gonna be a coefficient. The width is gonna turn into dx. Um, and then the, we're going to add up all the disks. So we're going to add up all of those radii. Okay, so when we add them up, that's where the integration comes in. Okay, I think this the next slide has the has has it that for you, right? You've got to fill that in. Is there a disk method box? Oh, you don't have that. <laughs> it got cut off. Interesting. All right. Make sure that these two are written out in the left-hand column then. Okay. And if you want to think of, remember, your horizontal axis is the x-axis, vertical axis is the y. So I would just write disk method and then write these two things down. Okay. Okay, are do you agree with what they got? No. Apparently I need to do some editing on this Yes. One, huh? Everybody okay? <coughs> okay. We have to, what do we do now? Plug in right the two, in the does the zero column. matter this time? Nope. No, because it's on the bottom, right? So is that what you got when you plugged in the two? Formulas. All right, and you did some more arithmetic and maybe got 10 thirds? You weren't there yet? Okay, take a minute, see if you've got it, make sure you match us. All right, we good? Okay. Good news, we're going to cross out example seven. So we're going to keep six and cross out seven. Okay? All right, so we have to sketch the region and find the area again. Okay?
Okay. Um, so, we kind of need to figure out what this is going to look like. This is going to be some sort of parabola but laying on its side, isn't it? Okay, because it's y squared instead of x squared. So in order to graph that, I may do a little, I may actually solve it for y because it asks us to sketch it. Okay, so I would what, move the 3 over? And then I divide by a negative, so it's going to swap my yet. signs. And then we're the going to do what with the... All right, everybody got that written out in the left-hand column? Call it with the squared to Okay, write it. that out in the left. We're writing that out in the left-hand column, ladies, it. that just walked in. So what ends up happening is it ends up being, you end up shifting opposite direction, and it ends up opening towards the left side. So it's something like this. It should have been plus minus. Okay, this one here is a line. I would just move my one over real quick. So y intercept is you negative one. You only need to write this method and the two. The, what's that? What I kind of put in brackets there. So that's approximately what the picture looks like. So this would be the region that we are integrating in there. Okay. I'm going to do an okay. example. So this time we're going to do again, a setup, remember but don't our, evaluate. We have to decide which direction right. we're going. That determines so if we're using x or y. So I want you to first. Okay. You're use the and remember, we have to be ne near or next to our axis or touching our axis. So everybody see if you can so get we're it set up. So we're going to set up an integral to evaluate. Set up and evaluate. There's a typo. It should be and. Set up and evaluate the integral that gives the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region about the x-axis. So they told us my axis here. Sometimes they tell us in the problem. So you got to kind of watch the verse instructions versus I'm showing it to you right there. All right, so we always start, when we are doing a revolution, we always start with pi. Every single time we're doing a revolution, pi is the first thing you write down. Don't get it mixed up with what we did yesterday. We did cross sections yesterday, right? For cross sections, we don't write down pi, okay? Only if it's a, a semicircle cross section. All right. Um, they did not give me, oh, I, there's a typo. They didn't give me what my limits were. So I'm going to put that, t write that in there. That should have been part of the problem. It should have been going from zero to two. All right. What is this a picture of? Yeah. Okay. Caesar, you got, you got to do this, right? Does it, parabola sitting on its side, right? But only half of it because we only have the positive square root. Um, so what they're basically wanting us to do, it says we're revolving that around the x-axis. So do you see how the region we're revolving is touching the x-axis? That's what I mean by, that's how you tell it's a disk. The region is touching the axis, okay? We'll see, so we'll, it's going to be different tomorrow, so that's why I'm emphasizing it today. The region is touching the axis of revolution. So I'm, see, see, this is here what I'd be revolving, it's touching this axis right there, okay? All right, what are my limits going to be? Zero to two. Zero okay. to two. Let's check okay. it. Um, and then the, the, the formula limits? says I take my function and I square it. And then throw a dx after it. If it was in y, we throw a dy after it. All right, what can I do to simplify that before I integrate? Yeah, the square and the square root cancel. So I really y have squared. pi, the integral of Because we have to go to this way across it, right? Dx. We aren't doing the up and down because the up and down we'd have to split the it up. R, the radius Everybody is your function. That? So we didn't okay. we change it. We're going to this direction. Okay. So R, this is so always going to be your R squared, squared is or R minus your R. what? And then we square it when we put it in here. Okay. All right. Y plus um, that's all I want to do. What right? is um? What is that? The, I'm going to go parentheses. I'm going to go back to that down. that R again. Just so you make sure you understand. Right. If you really want the radius, I wrote it down because that would be the radius of my circle. Isn't the radius what's changing? Yeah, so the function right, is what's changing, so that's why we have the to integrate assignment that. is today. Okay, uh, when we integrate x, what do we get? Over 2 from okay, 0 to 2. Go back and do it is now. the 0 going to matter in this case? It. So, no. so how do you know what you really going to do is put in the 2. So and what is two and that's squared. probably the hardest thing about this, Four right? Pi first of all, your first clue was zero. that it gave you in y. So what are we going to get for our answer on this Okay. So that's a good big big And I remember I started going to go oh, right and left answer. versus Boy. versus up and down. It's been a while since okay. I've done that. The second um, one is is if I, if I went you, up and you down. Want, I'm on started this you with a really one. easy one. Okay. They might they're probably going to get a little bit messy. Oh, okay. There's a part right, right. here. See right Let's in here. Let's look at the next one. How um, the function is on top of itself. 
So top it's a, minus it's the same bottom thing, is but now what does it say we're revolving here, around? Then it is here. Y axis. Okay, so it's so a little, it is a little bit different. And I, I should have, have given you this. Parts. Does that so make you sense? should have also had that okay. in there. So I would okay. be integrating from here to here. And then I'd have so to integrate let's, that little chunk Let's look by at what itself. the difference would be. If so I were to revolve this thing here. I see that I have to integrate here, two different pieces, it's, it's right, sometimes it's If I spun that around, go it's going to look right kind of like back. a cup on its okay. side, right? So yeah, did I it's answer gonna your It's going to look like something like that, okay. right? Okay. Now right, look at this next one. one. I have the same function, but now I'm revolving here. So I need this distance in here is what I'm revolving. So when I go to revolve that, Yeah, it looks like like a funnel kind of. All right. Yeah. So, and you don't have to visualize every time, but it's good to if you can kind of figure it out. Sometimes that helps our brain, right? All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend instead of this being an F, it's a lot. I need to if it's in Y, I need to solve this for X. I need it, I need our function to be in terms of Y. So I'm gonna pretend instead of that being an F of X, I'm gonna say it's Y. Am I being really sloppy writing over the top? How do we undo the square root? Square. square both sides. So really I have that y squared equals x. So this is the radius this time. All right, we have a revolution. How do we start? Pi. Pi. Okay. What are my limits? Zero to two. Zero to two and that was only because I, that was what was given to me. Okay. All right, what's my radius or my function this time? And what do we always do to it? Square, Square it. And then instead of, because it's in Y's, we would write DY. <laughs> All right. So couldn't I simplify a bit before I integrate? Yep. So Y to the fourth DY. All right. When we integrate Y to the fourth, we get what? Y to the fifth over five from zero to two. Okay, I'm putting in my two. What's two to the fifth? Mm, thirty-two pi over five minus zero, right? So just thirty-two pi over five. Did the area? Did the volumes come out the same on those two things? Not even close, right? So it does make a, following these instructions and make sure you're understanding what you're where you're revolving is really important. Because the answers are not the same, okay? Because it makes two totally different shapes. All right, let's try another one, okay? So this one says where are we revolving about? The x-axis. So what this one here, because it's a line that we're revolving about the x-axis, it makes a cone shape, right? Okay? It looks like an ice cream cone. All right. Um, so I'm going to do the volume equals. What do we always start with when we're doing a revolution? Pi. Is my area that I'm revolving, is it touching my axis of revolution? Yes. yes. So that means we're using this disk method. Okay. All right. From where to where? And notice that was on the graph this time, right? You could read it off the graph. I didn't have to give it to you. Zero to two. Um, what's my function? Good. And then we're going to square that and dx. So I made this, this one's harder, even though it's only, it seems so easy because it's a line, right? But it's actually a little bit harder because don't I need to foil that thing before I try to integrate it? I'm not going to try to do a U substitution. Not when I can foil something, even though it looks ugly to foil. So it's negative one half X times negative one half X. One, one, fourth, uh, one, fourth one fourth X squared and then negative one half times one is negative one half. And we have how many of those? What's negative one half and negative one half? One. one. So I'm just it's just gonna be a one there. And then one times one is gonna be one dx. Technically I should have parentheses around it. Oh we've done the squaring part. So now we're ready to integrate. So we've got pi. When I integrate one fourth x cubed. Let's see if we can do that all in one shot. So oh, sorry, x squared. X squared's gonna go to what? cubed and wouldn't I divide by three so what's going to happen with the four times the three? Twelve. So I'm trying not to write down a million steps. Okay. I'm trying to eliminate a little bit of work. All right. When we integrate negative one x what do we get? 
Good. And when I integrate one, what do I get? X. Good job. All right. So now we're going to plug in. All right. Is the zero going to matter? No. It's on the bottom. I'm not even going to worry about doing the subtract zero thing this time. All right. What's two cubed? Eight, Eight over 12 minus what's two squared? Four over two is going to really be what? Two. two. And then we put in a two. What happens? The twos cancel. Wasn't that nice? All right. So that makes our fraction work a lot easier. What is eight twelfths reduced to? Three over four pi. How did I, last year I wrote down two thirds. How did that come out of there? I can't even see how that came out of there. I have the same, no, I have eight twelfths and I, we reduced it to two thirds. Apparently. Yeah, you can Divide by four. Oh, it is two thirds. Okay. They were right last year. All right. Two thirds. Okay. Let's look at the next one. All right. This one, where are we revolving? Y axis. Again, it looks like a cone, right? Okay. Um, is my area that I'm revolving touching the axis of revolution? Yes. Okay. So I've got to get this in terms of y. Actually, if you look at the picture, didn't they do it for us? Yeah. So we could do it ourselves, but they did it for us. It looks like they've even got the limits on there for us. So all we really have to do is just start plugging it in. So what is my, uh, what do I always start a revolution with? Pi. Pi. Good. And what are my limits going to be? I know we've used 0 to 2 on almost every problem. It's not always going to be 0 to 2. Zero to two. Yep. Are we okay with that? Y-axis? you got to use the ones that are on the correct direction. So 0 to 3, guess what? The answer for 0 to 3 multiple choice would be there. Okay? All right. And then what am I going to put in here for my function? We're, going, we're around, revolving around the Y, so I have to use the one that's in terms of Y. Okay, and then what do we do to it? Square, Square it and put what after it? Dy. dy. Whatever variable you're in, that's what you need. Okay? All right, watch what I'm going to do with this one. So I'm going to do some simplifying before I try to integrate. What is 3 halves when we square it? 9 fourths. That's a, a coefficient, so I could just throw that in front of my integral symbol and not have to mess with it when I integrate. All right, and then I've got y squared, dy. Okay, what do I get when I integrate y squared? Over 3 from 0 to 2. Is the 0 going to matter? It's not on the top. When it's on the top, that's when we need to be careful. So I'm going to plug in my 2. What's 2 cubed? 8 over 3. What can I do now? I could do some canceling, can't I? So what's my answer? <coughs> Six pi. All right. I'm going to try to do five and six, and then we're going to call it good. OK? Oh, there's only five and six. There isn't a seven. My PowerPoint has a seven in it. I don't know why. All right, apparently we cut that one out. Um, so uh, find the volume of the solid revolved. Um, what axis am I going around? The x-axis. Good. All right. So this one here is a fourth power. It's kind of like a parabola, so it would be it kind of just be a little steeper. Okay. So we're revolving here. So the region is in here. Um, so is it t is the region we're revolving touching the axis of revolution? Yes. So we know that we're going to do a disk. Okay. So what do we start our our, our revolving with? Pi. Okay, what are your limits going to be? Okay, so what, look at this. They only gave us that x equals 2. So this time what they're basically saying is it's bounded by these things. It's bounded by this axis, this ax, that, that line, and this. So, what would, so in the x world, I have a 0 because it's touching. It's all intersecting right there, right? Yeah. And then it also intersects here. So that's a, it's a little bit 
different, but it's still zero to two. All right, what is my, my R or my function? X to the fourth, and we're going to square it, dx. All right, so we got pi, um, and when I, before I integrate, I get x to the what? Eight. Eight dx. All right, when I integrate x to the eighth, what do we get? Nine, nine from zero to two. Again, is the zero gonna matter? No. no. What's two to the ninth power? You probably need your calculator for that one. Five twelve. In, in David was using his his his, his built-in calculator, his brain. <laughs> okay, he was getting there. He would be faster if we were doing it on a test, right? With no calculator. Okay, so we're setting up and evaluating again. I'm going around what axis? And I know this one is kind of weird because of the square root. It's still a kind of like a sine. It does. It got. It basically is. It's a little bit of a sine function. Um, we need to figure out where it crosses. Um, so I am going to. Or, or actually, is it first? Are we revolving? Is that region touching the axis of revolution? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, the. I need to figure out my limits on this thing. So I need to take it, I need to set this, e so I'm gonna set it equal to zero to figure out my limits. So when I, what, how do I get rid of the square root? Square. square, so I need to know where sine of x is equal to zero. So think about the unit circle. So unit circle says we go from where to where where sine is equal to zero. Pi, so zero and pi. Okay, good. So this is zero, this is pi. Okay. All right, so we know that our limits are going to be from zero to pi. What do I have to start with when I'm revolving? It has to start with a pi out front. What's the function? Square root of sine x, and then what do we have to do to it? Square it, put a dx after it, but what's going to happen with the square and the square root? I'm not going to rewrite that. Okay, I know. Good. You were ahead. That's okay. <laughs> we wanted to make sure that we are all on the same page. All right, what do we integrate the sine? What do we get? Negative we haven't forgotten our trig integrals, I hope. All right. Now, this time, be careful. Is zero going to matter this time? Yes. 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 When we have trig, we have to be really careful. So we've got pi. We've got negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero. All right, so let's see. My double negative is going to go positive. What's the cosine of pi? Negative, negative one, right? Because it's a negative from here and the negative one from the problem. And then what's the cosine of zero? One. So I've got double negative goes positive, two pi. All right, so just a little preview of what's to come. Do I necessarily have to have my axis right here? What if I floated a line up here and had my function up here touching, and I revolved around that? Okay, I, that could happen as well. Okay, but see how that function is touching? Okay, yes. So here's the other thing that could happen. Let's say that that's my axis of revolution. Um, and then my region is up here. See how that's the axis of revolution? There's a gap. Yeah. When you have the gap, that's what we call a washer. That's tomorrow. Okay? So we got a little bit more work to do when we see the washer. Okay? All right. Make sure you're collecting money in your buckets. Make sure you're selling fruit snacks. If you're bored, we do have enough workers. But if you're bored, we do have a snack bar out at uh, the swim meet today. Okay? Okay. If you're there, bring your fruit snacks box. Yeah. Cuz we're going to do the fruit snacks separate from the snack bar. So if you sell a fruit snacks, put it in your box.